to what's happening with Africa Sports Ventures Group. Uh, would you want to educate us more on uh, what you do? Okay. Well, I normally am the founder of Athletics Africa. Mm. So for 16 years now, I've been running the largest website for athletics in Africa. Okay. And so last year, I joined African Sports Ventures Group also. The aim basically is, at the core of it, is Pan-Africanism. Mm. So we wanted both Africans at home and diaspora to okay. come together and build a sustainable uh, sports industry in Africa. Basically, we want to look at how can we make money from our sports? Mm. How can we stop the brain drain in our sport? How can we stop losing athletes to other countries where there are better facilities or better greener pastures, so to say? Sure. So the key for us is we've been diaspora for a lot, a lot of years. What are the things we've learned there? What can we bring back to Africa in terms of best practices, in terms of ideas, in terms of you know, um, culture and value that we can bring to the sport on the continent. Mm. So African Sports Ventures Group is a non-profit, is a for-profit mm -hmm. uh, sports solution and services company. So we are here to profess solution into sport. Okay. And uh, last year we signed a memorandum of understand, uh, um, MOU uh, with FASO, which is the governing body for sport, university sports in okay. Africa. And they are also under the FISO, which is the World International Sp uh, University Sport Organization. So we are going to start uh, next year what we call African Collegiate League, ACL. Okay. It's like the NCWA style uh, championship for African university students. Mm. And we are starting with 32 universities at the launch. Okay. Basically, these universities are like the model that we're starting with. They have, they are mostly old universities with a lot of alumni. They have a high number of students. Okay. And they are core university in their countries. So we have 55 countries in Africa. We are aiming to at least half of that. So wow. 32 universities cut across those um, 20 or so countries mm. to start. And then we build on, on that. But basically what we wanted to do is to have a culture in university where, one, we have a sports scholarship program mm -hmm. with the ACL League. So all the students that are partaking in the league, which, by the way, we're starting with basketball and football first, okay. are going to be on scholarship. So the, we want to give them everything they will get if, for instance, they decide to go to the University of Florida, University of Tennessee. So someone like Divano Duduru, for instance, if you, if you have a program in place, he doesn't really need to go abroad. He can be in a university here and still have the same access. Mm. So we bring in qualified coaches, trainers from all over the world here to work with them here. Mm. We're bringing each of the schools, we're trying to set up a campus for the sports people. So they have access to a gym in there, a physiologist, a psychologist, a, a, a physiotherapist, everything in there. And the idea is, let them have everything here so that they can make the Olympic national team from here. Oh, okay. And then the ACI provide a competition for them to, all year round to actually compete and get that um, best shape for the championship or to represent the national teams. Mm. Now, let me, let, let, let me um, stop you there and take you back. You, you talked about um, starting off with um, the universities now. Yeah. And I know sometimes, back then, we used to have the Nuga Games. We still do, but it's not, it's not as rampant as it used to be uh, way yeah. back. The National University Games. There's also the West African University Games and uh, the Nigerian Polytechnic Games. And these games are supposed to be a way of um, discovering these athletes, helping yeah. them groom these talents, and helping them not break into the national teams, and of course, uh, securing Olympic tickets and all that, which seems to have done died down. And I also know that way back we used to have means of using sports in gaining admission into yeah, universities. universities. And uh, it's, it, it stopped working. It stopped working because of the system. So wouldn't that be a huge challenge to, to you? Well, it didn't actually stop working. The problem mm. is the government stopped funding sports. They stopped realizing that most of the problem we have with youth rest, uh, rest in Africa, mm. crisis and conflict here, is because the youth in Africa are not gainfully engaged in other things. Yeah. So if they have thought about that, they would have spent more money engaging this youth rather than all the things they use this money for. Mm. So for us, we will support all these events you just mentioned, Nuga. For instance, Nuga, is, is, they're actually under FASO. Now FASO is under FISO. Okay. So 
how do these athletes qualify to represent their universities in World Student Games organized by FISO? This year, FASO is actually organizing what they call it, I think it's the 10th African University Championship in Kenya okay. this year. So all these events are there, but how many people within the university actually know, know about it? How many students in the university that want to do sports are able to do sports mm. while still doing, while still getting their doctor, uh, you know, masters or doctor, yeah. doctor within the university? I remember when I was in UI, for instance. Sometimes you have to make a special deal with the head of the department. If not, you have to you, you miss a year. If you exactly. go for Nuga games and they, you miss your exams. The university, there's no recourse to within the university for you to do that. So that's why we're negotiating with the universities first. How do they create a balance for these athletes? Mm. So that the student athletes have not, not privileges, but a special condition that whatever it is, they can do their exams. And we're trying to organize this uh, Super League during the time when the university, after the exams, break? really, yeah, on break. So it's going to be a three, four weeks event for each sport like that. And then, but then the athletes will be there throughout the year training and using the facilities. Mm -hmm. And they will also be able to use scholarship in the university to go to, to further their studies. Mm -hmm. But for us, the idea is we want to make sport profitable in Africa. Okay. So not only for the investors or for the athletes to actually qualify or develop, we also want the investors to gain so we are look, working with partners, and that part, part of the reason why I'm here is to look for partners who can support us in different things. We want to build, in each of the universities that are partners, we want to build an indoor sport arena there mm -hmm. that is reusable, that is scalable, and it can be used for every sport. So today it can be basketball court. Tomorrow it can change it over and become a volleyball court. So that way, when the school, the students are not using it, mm -hmm. We can use it for other purposes. Sure. And for us, the sponsors gain by sponsoring that because also the students are able to learn through that. So the students are able to learn facilities management. They're able to learn different aspects of managing it and organizing such big events, which okay. they can, when they graduate, they also really have work experience to take to the job market. Mm. So which, if you look at it now in Nigeria, most of our facilities like the National Stadium are all badly managed. Mm. Why? Are we producing from our universities hands-on, a student with hands-on experience to manage these things? Mm. Do we have facility managers coming out of universities to do this? They are already experienced working with this. The last time Nigeria hosted any event, hosted any event was 2009 uh, FIFA World Cup, isn't it? The people that volunteered for that program then, most of them are not the, at the age now. Sure. So we don't have this conveyor belt that is keeping us through learning process. Mm. In other countries, they have armies of volunteers. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at people who volunteer for London 2012. All of them were able to work a year, uh, few years later in London 2017 World Athletic Championship. Sure. Then there's World Indoor in 2018. So you have all these events and you have people, a lot of students coming through the process and actually building a career in sports. Mm. Very true. Now, let's, let's talk about um, the, the bodies and federations in, in Nigeria. Yeah. How, how much support are you getting from, say, for example, the Athletic Federation of Nigeria, um, probably the NFF and all, all the federations when it comes to, um, and the MBBF as well, the Nigerian Basketball Federation, because you are looking at kicking off with basketball. And uh, are you getting support from some of these federations? Well, right now we're not working with people We've not started working with people at country level. Mm. So the MBPF and NFF, we've not reached out to them. Okay. We are working with them at continental level. Okay. So first, we have this MOU with FASO. They control university sports in Africa. And for individual events, when we look for partners in terms of officiating and all that, we're going to look at the confederation uh, the, um, the, yeah, the confederation bodies. Okay. So for football, for instance, we'll be going to CAF. Exactly. For athletics, we'll be going to C CAA. And for basketball, we'll be looking at the African Basketball Federation. FIBA. Yeah, FIBA. So those are the organizations that we work with to, pro to provide us with all the technical assistance we need for the actual competition. And then, of course, through that, it will flow down to the national federations in every country. Because basically what we've noticed is in Africa, we have 55 countries, mm. different challenging rules and regulation in those places. And dealing with people 
on such micro bases is quite difficult. True. So, but when we work with a global organization like CAF, for instance, for the football tournament, everything flows down from there. Mm. And we're able to be more, we're, we're more effective that way. Okay. Because we're working with a core group of people who understand the vision, who understand the idea we brought, and what we want to get out of it. Mm. And we're looking at 10, 20 years that we can say, okay, we've laid down this foundation. The next generation can take it up from there. Because in the 60s and 70s, we have something similar. Okay. Most of the athletes that went to Olympics in 88, in 70s, 88 and 92, from Nigeria, were from the university. Mm. Okay. Well, um, of course, uh, we really do not have much time on our side to talk more on uh, this, but it's something we should talk about and, of course, uh, put our hand into to make sure that we get to um, grow sports in the country. And, of course, uh, we'll, we'll keep supporting your brand and uh, look forward to making it work. Thank you very much. We'll look up to that. Also, we'll look up to partnering with Plus, Plus TV, TV Africa. Mm. All right, probably we'll get to talk about that behind the scene. But of course, I'd like to thank you for coming up on the show today. Thank you very much. All right, well, I'm Udoka and Joe. Hope you enjoyed the package of today's show. Keep it locked down to Plus TV Africa because they give you the best when it comes to TV programming.